Hello YouTube, I fix it all here, Team I Fix It All. Um, the purpose of today's video was um, electrical connections and what I do and don't like. I think I'll start off with like big connections for bigger wiring. Um, uh, let's say like in your home, what kind of connections would you have in your own home? Like at your main panel board. That's one of the areas that really grinds my gears is the, the wiring coming into the main panel board. Most likely you don't have aluminum. Uh, you, don't ha you don't have copper, you have aluminum. But when I see some electricians stripping this stuff, what I'll see them do is um, they'll grab their lobster claws right here. I'll just uh, grab them like this and go around in circles a few times. Yeah. Getting it stripped. They check it. Yep, they can see some copper. And they'll even do this right here. They'll go uh, use them lobster claws to try to get the thing off. And yep, that works. Worked just fine. So, now they go to use this end to do work for you for the rest of its existence as a load-bearing piece of your electrical infrastructure. So, let's do a little bit of a, a forensics here. Where did it go? Dang it. Oh, okay. I'll get me... Uh, a single conductor out. I want to, as a result of using the lobster claws. You ready? Watch this. One, two. It broke. Hmm. Interesting. Wonder why it broke. One, two, whoops, three, that one broke. Why are they breaking? Well, it's kind of like glass. Copper is a soft metal, but this kind of copper here isn't really hardcore soft, soft car copper. There is some hardening, um, uh, and I'm about ready to dive, uh, take a dive into an area I don't know crap about, but there's some doping that goes on with the uh, manufacturing of this copper here that uh, gives it a degree of hardening. But this stuff is uh, breaking off. But why does that matter? Well, when it goes up inside of a, a lug... lug to be crimped I don't have a big when it goes on a a lug to be crimped or in one of these when it gets crimped all of those compromised dings in the copper will be stretched away. In other words, that crack in the pavement but will be widened. And what you'll end up with is less copper conductors are now in the game of electron exchange as the electrons get traded to create current flow in the wire. Because there will be compromised chunks here, which means the only copper that's really in the game are the ones that didn't receive the friction from the lobster claws, the cable cutters, not cable stripper, strippers. So, 
uh, let me cut this off and I'll I don't have the proper stripper for this gauge wire but I've uh, I've been around long enough to see a few shenanigans going on and uh, other people do and um, Let me cut this off with my ratchet cutters here. Okay. Clean that up. And it wouldn't be the first time I've seen this done. Where this is for cutting uh tubing it could be used to uh, also cut soft thin wall conduit or anything else in the pipe world that's soft and can be manipulated by a little cutoff disc but I can just almost feel when I'm done going through, and if I check as I spin around a couple of times, I'll say, well, that's enough. I'm not willing to go any deeper. I'll grab my pocket knife, kind of spiral around a little bit. And I could just finish it off by going like this. And grab the pliers and see what I can come up with here. There's the outside material. Try this again in the same spot. There we go. Going long ways. All right. In this case, we don't have any compromised conductors except for what my pocket knife dinged right there. Let's do a uh, forensics on that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's hard. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Well, wow, 19 times. Let's double check that. One, two, three, four. There was four. I must have had a ding in that copper. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven times. So as you can see, just proper stripping of the wires can be um, a game changer for the quality of your connection. strap this off a ratchet strap ratchet cut this off okay so this has been cut previously with the pipe cutter it's in pretty good shape
Here's what I don't like. Also, is what I consider these friction type connections. You put the wire in the hole and tighten this Allen down and by friction, this is engineered for 350 MCM, 350 cabling. And 350 cabling is about six sizes bigger than this uh, this uh, two aught. I believe this is two aught. Let me double check that. See if I get any uh, indicators here on these wires I have. Yeah, that's two aught. And two aught. We used this down at my uh, mother-in-law's house. It's a rental property now. But we removed one gauge aluminum on a 200 amp service. One gauge aluminum at 75 degrees C is only good for 100 amps. And this is an aluminum table. Uh, thirteen sixteen. Yep, table three ten sixteen. Here's the copper tables, and here's the aluminum tables. And it says right here that one gauge, now I'm looking for my temperature, and this was buried, so I'm going to use 75 degrees C column, and in raceway, in raceway, and yeah. 75 degrees C column, one gauge is good for 100 amps. Well, I upgraded that wiring from the meter socket to the main panel board with 2 aught 75 degrees C column, which is good to 175 amps. I wanted to go 3 aught copper to be 200 amp capable according to code, but the lugs in the panel board, the main lugs wouldn't hold 3 aught. so I, either way, it's an upgrade. Here's what I don't like about these connectors is, and you should check your own panel board too. Take the cover off and get your flashlight and peek down inside the top side of this. Uh, these here are main line lugs. I'm going to tighten this up and I'm going to show you what happens. Because a lot of times what I see is the wiring being used inside these lugs inside of electrical panels. The wiring is not taking up the whole hole. <laughs> the W-H-O-L-E H-O-L-E The whole opening area and if I tighten this down as far as she'll go and get it torqued which is click I feel like going over the vise for a second
what you'll see is some of these conductors aren't under any crimping pressure. Especially the ones that are on either side of the... I'll do this. There's conductors here that are... Wrong pointer. Conductors that are not in the game. They're way over here in this air gap area. Same over here. I see... Yeah, I see the outer two conductors over here that are not even under crimping pressure. Now I'm going to go in here and dink around and I'm going to show you what all I've seen as an exaggerated situation. Yeah, I can move some of these around over here. Yeah, I've got one, two, three, Yeah, I just moved a lot of them around. Um, on the outer sides of this, I have three conductors over here and two over here that are movable with my jeweler screwdriver. I can move them around. If you can move them around, they're mo they're not making contact. And another thing is, this thing when you tighten it down, it's um, cutting into the copper. So we're going to pull that out and see what it looks like. Earlier I said what I said about how many conductors are really in this thing. Hang tight. I don't have any idea. Let me let me count them up and see. I have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 conductors that I see that are somewhere in the range of um, individual 12 gauges, I would say. Feels like 12 gauge. Look at the conductors that were in contact. And the only ones that are in good electrical contact is the area where you see it off. The rounded part of this lug was burying itself into the copper right here the rest of this stuff is either not in the game or under minor contact this is why I don't like these friction connections I don't like these um, Friction type connections. Here goes another one. Let's uh, go for broke. Hang tight. 
So I'm going to carefully strip this wiring with the wrong strippers because the highest this goes to is 10 gauge. But what I'm going to do is gently and then uh, I might get away. I was pulling it off of there. Scar it a little bit. There we go. Open that up. Let you take a look at what I did. No dings where the insulation meets. No dings in the copper. Here's a connection type I don't like. Tools. This is a circuit breaker. Um, uh, just, just think of it as a regular breaker. But the type of lug that it has for interfacing with your home wiring is by way of this flathead screw here that transitions into that. I don't like this because you have to You'll be spinning up against your conductor in there. And it's doing nothing but just acting like a file. And just eating your copper as you turn the screw. Because everybody wants to make a good connection. And they even give you the torque rating you're supposed to connect the stuff up with. But it's a friction connection. The screw head constantly spins against the copper conductors, and that's not good. I don't like the fastener section of a circuit to be caught up in the game of uh, the crimping process. So yeah, this screw bit into the copper and cut a decent groove in... A couple of them. I don't like these kinds of connections. Same type here. This is a friction connector. Um, you'd put your wire in there. This is a really probably going to end up being a really good example of conductors that don't end up in the game. Because they'll flare out on you. I'm going to try to hold those with pliers. So you can see. There we go. <clears throat> I could easily go up in there with a, a jeweler screwdriver and jar a couple of conductors loose on your left hand side. There's two of them that could be easily moved. I'll do that. Yep, that's not in the game. Yep, that's not in the game. The ones that were on the left, you know, we don't have an air gap over there on the left hand side anymore because I moved two of the precious grand total seven conductors. 
That's a huge percentage of conductors that are not in the electrical game. I don't like these connectors that <clears throat> friction grab, cut into the copper, and, and trap the copper up against a piece of copper bus work. So I'll show you what I do like. Undo this. Pause the vid. So this is a two pole circuit breaker, 60 amp, doesn't matter, just saying, 240 volt, 120 volt, isolated from the other 120 volt line. But I like this connector, uh, Square D brand. I like this connector because the area where you insert your wires, there's an elevator in there. What do I mean by elevator? And get my screwdriver on there. Do I need something that big or not? Do something smaller. Where? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so sorry, bumped you guys. All right. So. What appears to be a hole here and a hole here, that's where your conductor goes. Right in there. And you're supposed to tighten this screw down, but watch what happens. There's no screw head spinning up against your copper. It's called an elevator type connection. What you're doing is if you just put your hands together in like a prayer, you know, bring them together, you're clamping the uh, metallic connector is uh, surrounding the copper and by way of this screw is pinching another piece of metal that's basically, it's going and it's grabbing this wire like that. There's no screw spinning on the copper. Let me show you. And then that 180. Get it out of y'all's way. I'll put the wire in the hole B. Tighten her down. use the big screwdriver <laughs> that's a sign that it's tight so looking all around you can see how there's no screw head is pokeying through and spinning on the copper it's just an elevator. Empty hole. See how that goes. I put the wire in the hole. And the elevator comes up. And Kerr smashes it. But it's trapped inside of a fully surrounded metallic area that... I like a lot better. Elevator connectors. Look for them in all opportunities you have for connecting electrical things up. Because the cheaper option is everywhere. Um, where did it go? Here it is. Let's see if that fits. We'll talk about that in a minute. Get my cutters. <clears throat> I 
<clears throat> so here's a uh, another connection I don't like. This is something off of a random uh, coax or what have you where the ground screw is right there and you're supposed to install what appears to me to be a self-tapping almost borderline sheet metal screw right there and put your copper conductor in and tighten the screw down dang you there we go okay so you got your screw tightened down I just don't like the idea of drilling into my, oh my God, so important ground wire. It happens all the time. The ground wiring in uh, your home, you wouldn't believe how it, it's, it's your ground rod. Do you know where yours is? Do you know the condition of its connection? So there's my uh, ground conductor and it's definitely been crimped by the end of that screw I just bumped the camera now we go take a look at the ground and I just did two bends right there and it snapped off I guess those kinds of connections are okay if well, screw it. I don't like them. I'm not going to endorse them. They're everywhere. Look for them. Be on the lookout for them. Here's your example. Of, <clears throat> you might have a ground rod outside. Uh, this is a copper clad steel ground rod. I don't know how many microns of copper there is on here, but I was eyeballing it earlier and... I would say it's like three or four thousandths of an inch. Um, ground rod. And every time I see one of these ground rods installed, there's always some dinky little wire coming to it. And I'll show you what, back when we had satellite TV, what resided on our satellite TV for the longest time was this I'm just going to make the connection and show you what the guy did or here we go tighten it up even tighten it I don't even know how he got this thing tight. I think he did it just like I'm doing it right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that's stupid. <sighs> you guys seeing that? Turn this on and see if it helps at all. So if you ever have to deal with these, what they call, acorn nuts on a ground rod, 
That's what these are called. I like the acorn nut because um, although it is a friction because it has a spinning screw that's going to be biting into something, what you're supposed to do is the opposite of what the good fella did. You're supposed to do this. Well, now you're tightening the screw down on your ground rod and you're pulling your acorn up on your your green your ground wire that's trapped between your ground rod and your bronze brass acorn nut like so that's what should be done <clears throat> that right there so i don't mind these even with a larger conductor being put in here this is just an example wire that I'm using. The actual <clears throat> ground wires that you might see are probably going to be um, this is solid copper wire here uh, compared to my screwdriver, compared to my pliers. I'm not even sure if that'll even fit. But like on your utility, you might see this going on. Actually, you'd... Huh. So that would be the proper thing to do right there. Tighten this sucker up. Tighten it up right there. You've got your ground conductor leading somewhere <clears throat> like to your meter socket where it belongs. You don't want this wire underneath that screw head because I could just hit that with a hammer and jar it loose. <clears throat> you don't want that. You don't want that style of connection. <clears throat> yeah. Here's another type of acorn connection, but it has its own built in elevator. This would be like if you wanted to splice uh, two wires together. Put one in one side, one in the other. Let's take a look at the dynamics of the acorn. This acorn splice. Notice how it's carrying a center part with it. It's designed so that there's no friction induced upon the conductors for which it's splicing it is all compression but these in their own right are a royal um they're troublemakers because wherever you're going to use one it's got all these sharp edges on it and You've got to properly insulate it 
from other stuff in its surroundings. Um, they're they're used select they're used um, with caution, but they do a good job and they don't compromise the copper conductors because it has an integrated elevator in it. Yeah. So I don't like friction connectors. Um, I like the ones that have elevators. You find elevator connectors in a lot of different places. Here's a little tiny switch here that has uh, its quick connect. You push the button down, put the wire in, and there's an elevator in there that just captures it. Let me see what I got to demonstrate that. Hang tight. Here we go. That's messed up. There we go. This has a little elevator that moves in there. You can almost see the metal clearing. getting out of the way for the cop for the conductor so if this were soldered down on a print circuit board you would simply push that down put your wire in let it go and it's stuck it's stuck it's Chinese finger puzzled until you squeeze it And remove it that has an elevator in it that's like a mechanical elevator uh, you probably have seen these before these are similar elevator scenarios these are spring-loaded elevator connectors but I can just put a wire in there let go and it's there from now on. Well, you get the point. No screws turning against it. So I like elevator connections. I don't like these friction connections that chew into, chew into your conductor. Here's another one that's crazy. And it's, it's, it's a professional lug. It is literally a professional lug that's used for I don't know, in a generator transfer switch or just a ground application. I would imagine due to design, I mean, I have never bought one of these, but due to just its design, I would imagine it would bolt onto the main ground bar and you would st stick your conductor in there and tighten it down. And so we can just put something in there like that, tighten it down, which I'll attempt to do here, see what we come up with. Yeah, I just don't like that at all. It's just, it looks like there's, con conductors are not in the game. So, when you can, look for electrical connections that have elevators bu built into them.
elevator type connectors. Elevators that don't put friction on your physical copper because copper is weak as it is, but since you don't have copper and you probably have aluminum, um, yeah, that's the size wiring that was, let me double check. Yeah, this was my ground. This was the size aluminum coming into my uh, mother-in-law's house. Uh, relatively speaking, in physical size, copper to aluminum comparison, they are pretty equal. But I know that this here, it's, uh, let's see if I can... It was made in 1979, insulated power cable. Yeah, I'm just against aluminum coming into your main panel board at the house, but it's cheaper. I'm going to do a another video on crimps what I like and what I don't like but be aware of um, let me keep going here hang tight I got one more thing I want to share with you here's something I wish every electrical outlet or switch has as a characteristic And there's a switch, there's a switch, there is a switch, wow that's some old light switches, outlet, yeah so let me show you something, this is like the world's cheapest light switch that could possibly exist. But what their engineer did, I don't even know what brand this is. Um, does it matter? It's a PS. I don't know what PS is. It's made in China. Okay. But what their engineers did was for this ground wire, because I don't... I don't like certain things about electrical connections on outlets um, and this ground connection actually is really ingenious here's my ground terminal but what they have on a tab is a little hole here well I can tell right away what that hole is for put your wire through the hole and then you can go like that, and bam, you're in like Flynn. You can tighten it. This GFCI outlet here does not have that attribute. So you have to physically wrap it around that screw. I like this a lot. I made a clean twist around that screw stud and there's no copper showing around the um, the um, cubic centimeters profile of this hexagonal head. You can't see any copper anywhere except for where it goes out this way and you can catch a little bit of it back here. So that's ingenious what i don't really like is when you um you have to make your little hook here 
and you go around this. I'm just going to quickly work this up. Trying to work it by the camera for you guys. Make my J-hook. Give her a little bit of a squeeze. You always want to make sure that your, your J-hook is going in the direction in which you're going to be tightening. And I've never liked these because the screws have a tendency to open up your J-hook copper and squish it outward. Not so prevalent on this switch. I wish these screw heads were more profiled like the older generation. But I, what I want you to pay attention to is how much um, how much room is underneath the screw head. Let's call this the mushroom. How much room is under here? I've got an older style. I got an older and I've got a much older style. Let's look at a newer style. Newer style. The underside of that mushroom head is pretty much identical to this one. Now let's look at a real older style. Look underneath that. Look how much room I've got underneath this screw head. Leaps and bounds more room. More room to protect that conductor when it starts to flare out when you tighten it. The head of the screw is much larger. And it's more profiled on the bottom side to be not rounded on the lower corner here. It's 90 degreed. It's rounded on the top profile. That's fine. But on the underside, it's really from the threads, underside and over. That's a 90 degree pattern. With this, there's a, uh, a lot of tumbling and all that when these screws were polished. It's not exactly as well as this old school screw that screw head can hold a lot hide a lot and guarantee a better surface area connection <clears throat> sometimes people will take their this is turning into a, a video more about what to look out for in your own home. So a lot of electricians like to slip the wire up in there like this. And they'll tighten it down. How is that possible? Well, it's due to the uh, profile of this plastic right here. Let me bend this. 
and you'll see what they've done. It's barely grabbing. And I put it on the correct side if I'm going to implement that method. Because if you put it over here, as you tighten the screw clockwise, it'll walk your copper out. But I've seen this done. This is what you got to look out for. You got to worry over things like when you do some some of your own DIY stuff and you run across something like that. You're like, well, what? I thought you were supposed to wrap it around the screw head. Well, some some outlets are designed such that you don't necessarily have to, especially if especially if this profile right here is semicircle right here. That's why it's rounded like that. You can actually push them in and trap them. Uh, you're supposed you're supposed to wrap them, but I've seen that done. Happens a lot. It could be in your home right now. Um, and if that comes loose, depending on how you have your outlets daisy chained, um, it could cause some arcing and sparking. Or it could easily become a loose connection, too. If it becomes loose, you're going to draw more heat through this outlet because there's more resistance in a hot spot. see what we got here now this outlet is not provisioned to allow you to sneak the wire in by loosening up this screw it's not provisioned to uh, trap because I like this outlet because it has elevators inside. You have to use those little holes, but there's elevators in there. There's no way you're going to be able to see that. But down in the hole, there's metal that comes together that when you put the wire in there, they close up. That's how this gets wired. You have to go in that hole. And then you have to tighten that up. And it's not the type of connector that ele electricians don't like where they're... This is not to be confused with those push-in rear stab outlets where you have to use a... To release the wire, you have to insert a jeweler screwdriver to uh, uh, open up the uh, spring tension on the contacts and pull the wire out. This literally is that <clears throat> inside there. That concept is going on inside the back of this outlet. I like that kind of a connection. There's no trauma on the copper conductor. I'm going to crank the hell out of this thing and pull it out and take a look and see what kind of trauma we've got on the copper. Okay, that's about enough. Yeah. You know, that wasn't even fair, because I had a used section of copper that I put in. Let me put a on traumatized. Okay, so I've got some scrapes on this. From stripping it should have been more careful but I do want to be more careful I want to see what's going on in there for real all 
All right, so I've I've got my detent cut for the copper. I'll grab the insulation and pull it off gently. So our only scarring we have, oops, sorry, uh, is a little bit around the base where I did some stripping, but the whole thing is shiny. So let's see what kind of. Let's see what kind of crimping force is going on when we tighten this thing down. Okay, that's on there. Wow, oh, that's clean as a whistle. Yeah, I'm not sure. Hard to tell where there was anything touching. There's a little brand new... Um, Pointer, a brand new ding mark up in here. Very interesting, though. I like that connector because it uses elevators, and I'm, you know, this is GFCI, but it also has integrated uh, child safety block off pads made by Hubble. So, outlets, connections on outlets, they've always bugged me because they've got to be done just right and just so, or else they become problems. But I thought I would take the time to share that ground terminal thing on this super cheapy because that's pretty damned handy. I wish... <clears throat> This ground terminal doesn't integrate that concept right here. It doesn't. The uh, flat tab, which it resides on, gives you a uh, an implied locking tabs methodology. That's a pretty generous undersized screw head to trap the copper um, normally I'm not worried about conservation of wire when I do these grounds I'll just come in like this and I'm giving it a, a wrap like that oops and i'm cutting off the excess with uh snips and side cutters i'm wrapped completely around And the true test of these connections is can you see copper when you look at the face of it? Can you see copper all the way around or do you only see copper where your wire's coming in and maybe the pigtail of the end? Honestly, that's good enough. I got a little pigtail here I could trim off. But you can't see any copper sticking out around the perimeter of the screw head. So connections, connections, connections. These 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 types of connections here are still in the same classification or category as these kinds of connections. They are friction. So therefore, you're cutting into your copper as you tighten them. And they, it doesn't take much once you nick this copper to end up in a situation where you have a conductor that you 
massaged inside the junction box and bolted it down. Then a few years later, you have to pull it out for some reason. And you're bending back and forth so many times. So you got to be careful with your connections. The point of this video was to get you conscientious about what kinds of connections do you have in your home? Where are your hot spots? What's getting hot inside your electrical panel? Do you have a little cheapy Harbor Freight thermal um, laser pointer that you could aim at every one of your breakers in your house? Do you happen to have a breaker that's tripping once in a while? You don't know why. Um, can you make it trip? What device is causing it to trip? Is there a loose connection? Uh, do you have a situation where somebody stripped the wiring back off of one of your devices and lo and behold you find out half the conductors are missing because the electrician cut off a couple of hairs to make it fit inside the hole so that it could be connected. And I'm not picking on electricians. I'm just saying, guys, shit happens. What do you have in your house as far as friction connections? Elevator connections are the best. Here's a, another one on a circuit breaker. It isn't really an elevator, but I like this connection because it's a like two slices of bread. You put the wire in there. Tighten the screw down, and it acts like a, a sandwich. There's no screw head scrubbing up against the copper. Notice how the, how it's designed though. It almost looks like it's telling you, I am designed to take two conductors. Because there's a little area over there that's kind of roundied out. I'm going to undo that. Tighten it back up again. And let you see that. Kind of like you got two locates, two openings. You can put a wire on either side. But it's not frictioning on the copper conductor. A lot of house fires are caused by loose connections and overcurrent draw and overcurrent um, conditions on outlets and or overcurrent draw on the breaker. Any outlet that's overheating, the circuit breaker in your panel board is getting warm. Kind of like the video I did on spark plugs. We were sitting there looking at spark plugs to see what, what looks different. Well, in your electrical panel board, you don't even have to be an electrician just to go to the panel board. And you can use the, the tender part of the meat of your hand, if you don't have a laser temperature thingy, to feel the face of your breaker. You're not going to get electrocuted. You got a breaker that's on. <laughs> yeah, that's on. Okay. And you feel the breaker with some tender part. That way you can detect the temperature in a more calibrated way. You don't want to... I got calluses. I mean, I could put my thumb on that and probably last for a while before I can say, Oh, that feels a little warm. But I usually use this part of my hand if I just want to feel breakers. 
and see who's getting warm. Do you know if you're getting if your breakers are getting warm? Do you know what that circuit can is can that breaker is controlling? Do you even know if it'll trip? Do you know if it's a elevator connector or a uh, a sh crappy friction screw type that tears up the copper as you tighten the screw down. Too long of a video, but the things I like and don't like about electrical connections. Alright guys, you have a great day and don't forget to reject the New World Order and the pedos. See ya. Bye.